Welcome to livingpianos.com. Robert Estrin here. The question today is, how much should you mark up your scores? You miss something in your music and you want to circle it. Maybe you would need to put fingering in. And you know, after a while, your whole score can be marked up and it can be difficult to see the notes. Here's an interesting story for you. Years ago, when I was at the Manhattan School of Music, I had a friend who was a piano major and she had the Henley editions of the Beethoven sonatas, which are a very authoritative and very expensive edition. Uh, and I was helping her with uh, this particular Beethoven sonata, and I said, take out the music. And she opened up the score of this incredibly expensive, thick volume of Beethoven, and she turned to the sonata that she was working on with her teacher there, and it was marked up in several different color pen markings. So much so that you absolutely could not see the score anymore. Things were circled and, and big blotches of red, green, blue, all these different colors ink on the score. And I thought, can you imagine the injustice of this? The score was destroyed and there's no way that you could possibly see the notes anymore and the Beethoven markings. So that's an extreme example of what to avoid. Uh, the first thing I do with all of my students when I tell them to mark something their score, I first ask, do you have a pencil handy? So that's rule number one, only use pencil in your scores. Now my father used to have this really cool mechanical pencil and I have seen nothing like it that exists anymore. And it was a pencil that had four different color leads in it. And so he could mark scores with red, green, blue, and black. And it was such a tremendous way for him to mark scores in a coherent fashion. Yet, because it's pencil, the markings can be erased. Now, why is this so important? Well, early on, maybe you didn't see a flat in the key signature, so you put the flat in front of the note. And then maybe later, there was something else in that same measure, that a fingering or a phrasing. And so you start having circles and marks, and before you know it, it's not calling itself to your attention. So you want to be able to erase marks that you no longer need and only have the ones that are pertinent. For example, at a later stage of learning a piece of music, you might want to record it to see what kind of shape it's in. And in doing so, when listening back on the recording, you might want to gently circle the places where you want to review that you sleep places you missed. But maybe they were just one-offs. Maybe they weren't places you missed before, but you just wanted to reference them after listening to the recording. But not something that permanently you want to call to your attention every time you're looking at the score. Now, fingering is a really critical example because you may work out a fingering and think this is a good fingering and later when you're playing the piece up to tempo, you realize that fingering isn't going to work at all. As long as it's in pencil, you can erase and put new fingering in there. So that's the most important thing. Use pencil and don't obliterate your score with too many markings and erase the ones you no longer need so you have clarity of the actual score, which is what you need to see and digest. And you won't want to obscure it with too many markings. I'm interested in how you deal with markings in your scores, what you find helpful. Again, I'm Robert Estrin. This is livingpianos.com, your online piano resource. You're welcome to subscribe, ring the bell, the thumbs up. I appreciate all the comments. We'll see you next time.